everybody welcome back to another blind tuesday i hope you guys have been enjoying the content on the channel as of late and we are gonna start heading out pretty soon here just gonna go grab some food but before we do that i figured just to shoot the next blind tuesdays because um i was pretty set on what i was gonna do next because uh last last tuesday we discussed a kurosawa film namely uh yojimbo uh, which we discussed at length, actually, which hopefully will not be the case with this review. I'll try to keep this one a little bit short, I promise. Um, so, just to get to the, to the point, though, I figured to address another Kurosawa film, because of it being uh, fitting the criteria in 1960s, also because of the, uh, the remake that is going to be coming out in a couple of years' time, and... I just flat out like talking more Kurosawa, so just an excuse to talk more Kurosawa. Hey, Kurosawa is just amazing, so why not talk more Kurosawa on this channel? So, um, so I figured just to address a film that we we kind of touched on in the last review, uh, but I'm going to now dedicate a whole review to that film that I'm referring to is High and Low, which was I believe I'm not sure if it was written by him, but of course it was directed by Akira Kurosawa, starring once again Toshiro Mifune. I forget the number in collaborations they would you know go out and do a ton of films together to name off a few off the top of my head seven samurai throne of blood uh the hidden fortress Redbeard, uh gosh there's so many um drunken angel something that i have not seen yet um rashomon they've they, they've just done so many films together and high and low is well definitely a high point in their career uh, together, in their career, uh, their collaborations together. So, um, starts this year, Mifune, as a millionaire who is uh, invested a lot of money into a shoe company, namely National Shoes, as, they, as it was called. And he decides to invest even further, uh, invest a little bit more into the company. And it pays off potentially in a big way where he may, in fact, um, take ownership of the company as he is now, um, as he is uh, at a, in a position where he has poured all his funds, just everything, put the house, put everything, everything onto this one specific um, uh, move that could potentially change his life for the better um, and put his family in a much more wealthier state as his family is in, in a already a premium life uh, already. and. With this, it will give him more leverage, essentially. Um, whilst, you know, finalizing what he will have to do, that main, mainly sending off a check, I believe it was like $60 million, something like that, um, to the airport to close a deal that would probably give him ownership of the company, um, two kids, one of his, his son and another not his son, um, one of his, like, servants or something, um, they were playing outside, and one of them gets abducted. Now, initially, what happens is that um, the kidnapper calls Toshiro Mifune and gives him the impression that his son was kidnapped. We find out very quickly that what actually has occurred is that the kidnapper took the wrong kid. So what he believes is to be Toshiro Mifune's son is actually the servant's child. And uh, at this point, there's an investigation that, that, that starts to unfold, the police get involved, and Toshir Mifun is left with a, a, a dilemma, which is, do I, because uh, the kidnapper is asking for a substantial amount of money, and that amount of money um, is all embedded within this one check that he is about to send off to potentially become even richer than he was before, but now is in the dilemma of, do I maintain my living do i can i do i just continue on this path and maintain that living or lose it all in for the safety of this one child so um so in essence what high and low is about is morality it's about someone uh, as morality their code uh the varying gray areas within that and um and what i love about this is the overall display of that theme because you know what? what if it film acts very much so like a stage play in some respects because for a large portion of, of the film, it's very restrained to this one room, the living room, where the police are there. They're doing their their thing. Sher Mifune with his 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 um his dilemmas. Um, the, the family members just kind of just quietly to themselves, like giving their own 
uh, their own ideas, their own their own answers to this to this dilemma. And you see how everything unfolds, and ultimately how each character is wrestling with the situation and how they perceive the situation. Uh, some take it from a sympathetic point of view, while others look at it more selfishly and see how you know they 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 they, they look at it more as a as an advantage potentially. Uh, while others also see it as a financial game. Like there's different motivations at play within this one situation. And what I love about it is, again, a lot to do with what Kurosawa is doing in the craft within the craftsmanship. It's not just, you know, it's not just concerns with framing. It's concerns with showing you points of the character, specifically with Toshiro Mifune's character, who again is just brilliant in this because you see on his face that dilemma taking place. You see that his face trying to wrestle with what is the right thing to do. What is uh, the right path to take um, is it is it the best to option to take look after my family or is it to sacrifice everything to pr in pr protection of this child though the child isn't my own what is the better option here um, and it does instill that 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 stress that as at the same time that sense of pressure is felt within watching the film because of course time is of the essence as if as the kidnapper says that you have a certain amount of time to get your answer or else the child dies and there's even um, questioning of whether or not the motive the motives for said thing are real would he actually kill the child you know they really dissect this whole dilemma um, and whittle it down to where there is one option absolutely there is one option it's a matter of if the character knows if that what the right option is you know is it to protect his family is it to to save this child, and ultimately, if you have any sense of humanity, you absolutely, absolutely know what the answer is. But, um, but it really puts you in that situation, while at the same time also giving you a perspective of the investigation that unfolds afterwards. You know, once that decision has been made, you know it's not strictly just squarely what is happening in that house. It also takes shows you the outside portions of that house. You know, m making commentary on the wealthy and the poor, um, and potentially the, um, you know, uh, sort of the, the gaps in, um, in mentality and overall just, um, you know, financial advantages, um, this, and, and within that also instilling a certain moral code, like they give you a spotlight on the kidnapper showing you his whole, um, his whole perspective of things. Um, and perhaps, you know, showing us again some level of sympathy towards a character like that, um, which in my book it would be a little iffy just because it's like, you know, considering that he was able, he was going to kill a child, it's like, I don't know if I don't feel, if I feel as much uh, for a person like that. But still, the, I like that the film is stretching that sort of gray area to everybody. It's not in service to just a certain kind of people. It's to every character in the film. Um, and I like that it also dem shows you more of what happens afterwards, the sort of, um, the, the sort of fallout from that situation, you know? Um, so it's a very, it's a, it's a film that said presents a, a, a lot of perspective that is within that also about perspective, about morality, about how we take information, how we perceive things, what, what we ultimately view as the right thing, and what that, def how that defines us as a person, um, and um, I, I just I love the overall just dissection of those themes because that's ultimately what the film is doing. It's not just flexing these ideas; it's dissecting these ideas, and I love how it ultimately dissects them. And again, the performances here are just great to share Mufun, just again being who he is being just completely believable in every circumstance that he is. Um, I love just, I, I love the expression of him because what he does in this film is like, just without many words for a large time with that character, you see the stress on his face, you see the pressure for him to make a decision and you see the back and forth within him and without even uttering even a real word at some points, it's just, 
brilliant. That's the performance that he puts on. Um, and complementing that is Akira Kurosawa and his craftsmanship, the way that he moves in on certain characters and leaves certain characters for a little while. Um, you know, what's important in the frame for this particular moment? You know, what is more important for us to follow and listen to? Is it the officer? Is it Tashir Mufun? Is it the wife? Is it perhaps uh, the the servant who has lost his child to this kidnapper? Like, it floats around ultimately to instill two things. One, pressure to give you this idea of just, like, stress, that there's only almost so much time to make a decision, but also giving you within that like, as if you are adopting a kind of, again, with uh, how Yojimbo was, kind of giving you to share Mufun's perspective, hearing how everybody is taking it, and you yourself taking in such perspectives to inform your own perspective, and to, to decipher what is generally the right, right thing and the wrong thing to do. Like, you hear from the serpent, you hear about, his, of course, him and his son, and the fact that, that you know, that it is someone's child. It's not, it's not your child, but it's someone's child. And then you think about your own family, about what kind of financial position they might be in, hearing how the wife is like saying all these things, and yet she has never lived a life of poverty. Like, it lays it out very, very formally and very detail-oriented to where it does feel that there is a gray area amongst all of this, even though if you have a level of humanity it, within you, you know absolutely what is the right thing to do. Um, you know, money should not be a factor. Um, but but it's very detail-oriented. I mean, anything Kurosawa comes with details, extreme details, and High and Low is a prime example of that. You get another great performance by Toshiro Mufun, you get intrigue, you get investment. Um, I, the only th quibble that I will give to High and Low is that it might be a tad bit long. Um, I, I was surprised when revisiting it a little bit. Of, I saw like a bigger chunk of it, um, a, big, a big chunk of it uh, recently, just to refresh my mind on how I felt about the film. And I was a little surprised to know that it was um, two and a half hours. I thought for I thought it was a little bit shorter than that. And um, there are certain things amidst the aftermath of, of a decision that Jasir Mufun makes that can be a bit, maybe a bit redundant or again just a little tacked on perhaps, but it all is still informative in the, in the thematic quality of said film. You know, it's not something that just is, is, you know, it's not something that just feels as if we're just repeating a certain point again. It's shedding a different light on that same idea, even if the overall length does not really give it much um, weight or much um, or much um, or much purpose, you know. Um, but in overall narrative sense, it may, it feels appropriate to exist. It just feels that the length might not be um, sustainable, you know. Um, but beyond that, though, just perhaps a questionable length. It's it's still brilliant in many respects, just by writing, just by overall directing, the acting, again, from Tashir Mufun, just how brilliant he is as a performer. It's, as I, like I said with Yojimbo, it's Kurosawa. You get, what you get with Kurosawa is nothing short than just brilliant. And even though there is a little, uh, again, a, 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 an issue perhaps in length, I would have to rewatch it again. I didn't, don't think I really had an issue with the length of the film. I just overall overall feeling of, of how of how I look back on it, it might be a little bit long. Um but I doubt it if I were to watch it all all over again. But um but it's really investing, really intriguing, acted really well, directed brilliantly, written just really, really carefully and just like just detail oriented. It's another demonstration of why Akira Kurosawa is the greatest filmmaker of all time. He just understands how to dissect and represent his ideas in 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 a in a multitude of 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 ways. It's not in just one narrow approach and every other person is just a a representation of the exact same quality of the exact, exact same idea. It's to get demonstrate different perspectives within the in a, a centralized idea. And it's great. It's absolutely great. So, 
So, so yeah, so those are my thoughts on High and Low. I absolutely love it. I love this movie, and I I can't get enough of Kira Kurosawa. But we're going to stop with Kira Kurosawa for now. And we will continue, you know, maybe in the future for a film of the week or so. But I just want to keep talking about Kira Kurosawa too much because then, you know, perhaps it would feel a little, you know, a little you know, a little much, you know, a little redundant, so, but yeah, so that's gonna be it for this Blind Tuesdays, thank you guys for tuning in, uh, sorry, just, I talked to someone real quick, but, um, but, um, but yeah, that's gonna be my thoughts on high and low, just love it, absolutely love it, but, um, but you guys want your thoughts on high and low in the comment section below, and of course, this being Blind Tuesdays, I'm gonna spin the wheel once again, and once I find out what that, uh, qual, that, uh, that category is, sorry, I just, the word escaped me what the category is i will leave it right here and you will know what that is that is for uh next week's blind tuesdays so so there you guys have it so so that's gonna be it for this uh blind tuesdays thank you guys for tuning in uh let me know your thoughts on high and low if you guys have seen it your thoughts on the remake uh that's gonna be coming out potentially in a few years i i don't get it i really don't uh i i like the sound of the cast but i just I don't like anybody touching anything in her like just do your own thing. Stop stop remaking things. Stop. <laughs> but especially Kurosawa. That's blasphemy, in my opinion. But um but let me know your thoughts on that and of course your picks for next week's Blind Tuesdays. Uh well I'm curious. I'm I'm actually really curious what this one's gonna be. So um but um but yeah, so let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And until then, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.